Hello, I'm Carolyn Robinson, and I'm delighted to have this opportunity to tell you a little more about the National Foundation for the Deaf and to show you some of the incredible developments that have been made in helping New Zealanders who have hearing loss to live lives of dignity. Thank you for taking the time to join me. The National Foundation for the Deaf came about because of the need perceived by a coalition of consumer and professional organisations concerned with the rights, health, welfare and education of all New Zealanders who are hard of hearing or deaf. Today the Foundation focuses on three key areas. Firstly, there's advocacy. Promoting the rights, interests and welfare of the one in six New Zealanders with hearing loss. Secondly, the Foundation works to address noise-induced hearing loss, whether industrial or social, and to promote the prevention of hearing loss. And thirdly, the Foundation offers support for people to communicate effectively, live positively, and to achieve their full potential. It's really quite extraordinary that today it's possible to enable those who are born with significant hearing loss to hear. That's something that couldn't have been conceived 50 years ago. Professor Suzanne Purdy is Head of Speech Science at the University of Auckland. Early research, we were looking at things in the 1990s, like how do families adjust to having a child get, receive a cochlear implant? Whereas now, our research is looking at how babies get respond to cochlear implants. And so we have much um, greater expectations now that we have better technology and we have the techniques to find hearing problems early and there's new evidence that hearing loss may be associated with uh, problems with memory and attention and we hope that means that people might be more motivated to do something early about their hearing and now we have the National Foundation for the Deaf that can bring all of those services together under one umbrella and it has been a strong um, lobbying organisation and has been a great voice for supporting research and clinical work in the area of hearing health in New Zealand. Can you imagine what it would be like to learn your young child has hearing loss? That's the devastating news Christina received when Jove was just three years old. Jove has recently undergone successful surgery and no longer has to wear his two hearing aids. It's made a big difference in his life. For us it was a real shock when the audiologist said he needs a hearing aid and then the audi audiologist said he needs another hearing aid, he needs hearing aids in both ears and that was that was a real shock. I, I want other children to have the chances that he's had. I want them to have the speech therapy so that they can make the sounds and, and make themselves heard. David started noticing significant hearing loss when he was 18 years old. It was little things at first, like not being able to hear someone on the phone. What the doctors didn't realise was he was showing the early signs of hearing loss. Within a short time, he couldn't hear anything at all. We never knew whether I was going to remain in employment or whether I would lose my job. And, and from that point on, it was living day to day um, to make ends meet and, and trying to put money away because you, there was always a fear that I could lose my job and then what would happen. When I did actually finish up losing all my hearing, there was really nowhere to go. Um, there was very limited support, if you could call it support. For David, a magical moment happened when his cochlear implant was switched on. I think it was around the end of October and I had my first switch on, sorry, um, in the November of 1998. And um, it was an unbelievable day um, and the switch on and the fact that I'd had all these years of not hearing and within a short space of a matter of two hours or three hours in the morning, there was noise coming through my ears. Um, you mentioned the orchestra and that was about three months later in the February of after 99. And I'd never been to orchestra because, well, what was the point of going to an orchestra when really you'd never heard it? I never knew music could be so beautiful. And it was 
you know, it, just when it came out, it was unreal, the way it affected me. It, it enabled me to do so much more with my life, not just home, not just work, but even contributing in, you know, voluntary roles and stuff, um, in those areas as well. And I think it's, to me now, it's about how the technology that's been brought in and made available now for people similar to me that give them the opportunity of being part of normal society, if you can put it that way, of hearing what people hear everywhere. And it just gives so many more opportunities and makes it so much easier for everybody. As a boy growing up on the family farm, Jimmy dreamed of being an air traffic controller, but progressive hearing loss in his left ear ruled that out. So at 22, he forged a different path, gaining a degree in information technology and working as a part-time school ICT administrator in Christchurch. So while my hearing loss has stopped me doing things uh, such as pursuing careers I wanted to, uh, it definitely hasn't stopped or slowed me down pursuing other passions which I have, uh, obviously including IT, gaming, uh, I also referee rugby as a sport, uh, so that's, that can be challenging at times, but it does mean you don't hear a lot of the rubbish coming from the sideline. Uh, and my other passions include uh, flying drones and videography, photography, so hearing, hearing loss doesn't affect that at all. The National Foundation for the Deaf is committed to being the very necessary bridge between those who are affected by hearing loss issues and their families and the support that's available in society. And the Foundation can only do what it does with the very generous support of donors like you. Donors are hugely important to the Foundation. They make it possible for us to deliver on our strategic goals and all of the initiatives that we want to put in place to make the lives of those with hearing difficulties better. The Foundation is reliant upon the generosity of its supporters to fund its work. And the recipients of that generosity, they're just as grateful. Nobody really values what you, well, what how important hearing is until you haven't got it. And when you haven't got it, boy, you realise what you've missed out on. When you're next updating your affairs, including your will, would you consider remembering the National Foundation for the Deaf with a bequest? It's always difficult broaching the subject of death and wills. It's something we naturally avoid talking about, even thinking about sometimes. But to protect our families and ourselves, it's something we must do. As well as making provision for our loved ones in our will, there's also the opportunity for us to give to the causes we believe in. Remembering the National Foundation for the Deaf in your will means they can continue to offer real hope to those who face challenges because of hearing loss. I do hope you'll consider leaving a bequest to the National Foundation for the Deaf. It really will help a whole new generation of people for years to come. Thank you for your support.